In today's lesson, we're going to be talking about congruency of triangles. And this might be a review for some of you from the previous grades, but congruent triangles, and I've used the shorthand for triangles here, congruent triangles are triangles that are going to have the same side lengths and they are also going to have the same angle measurements. So if two triangles are congruent, we know that those triangles are going to have the same lengths of their sides and their angles are going to be the same as well. And the symbol that we use to denote congruency is this symbol. In South Africa, we are going to use this symbol to signify that two triangles are congruent. But you might also see a symbol that looks like this. This is also a symbol that is used to signify congruency. This is one that is more internationally used. And in South Africa, you are going to see this symbol used as well. So let's say you were given these two triangles. And this triangle was triangle ABC. And this triangle was triangle DEF. One thing that we can notice about these two triangles is that angle A is equal to angle D, angle B is equal to angle E, and angle C is equal to angle F. And these sides, the side AB is the same length as the side DE, the side BC is the same length as the side EF, and the side AC is the same length as the side DF. So these are congruent triangles. And if we actually just flipped this triangle DEF 180 degrees, we will see that we are going to get exactly the same as triangle ABC. This triangle DEF is just a rotated version of triangle ABC. So that's another important thing to make note of when you are looking for congruency in triangles. They might not be in the same orientation. You might have to flip them or rotate them and that is how you will notice that you have corresponding sides and angles that are equal. But as long as you have corresponding sides and angles that are equal in two triangles, those two triangles are congruent. So if we were to say that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF, the way that we are going to write that is to say triangle, and this is the shorthand again for triangle, triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. E, F. And it's very important to note that the order in which you write down these triangles is very important. So by writing down triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF like this, what we are indicating is that angle A is equal to angle D, angle B is equal to angle E, and angle C is equal to angle F. So that order is very important. If we wrote this triangle as triangle CBA, we would have to write down that it's congruent to triangle FED. We have to make sure that the angles that are equal, so those vertices that we've labeled that are equal in our corresponding triangles are in the same position. So the order in which we write this down is very important. It turns out that we have a few rules that we can use to determine whether two triangles are congruent without having to measure out each of the angles and each of the lengths of the sides. And I'm going to go over those rules in this lesson. So for our first rule, if we have right angle triangles like the ones that we have here, over here we can see that we have this purple angle as a right angle. It's a 90 degree angle and that is a right angle triangle. So if we have right angle triangles and the hypotenuse length and the length of one side are equal, the two triangles are congruent. So when we see two right angle triangles, all we need to check is whether their hypotenuse length and the length of one of their sides are equal. And if the hypotenuse length and the length of one side are equal, we don't need to calculate the length of the other side. We know that the triangles are congruent. So if this was triangle ABC and this was triangle DEF, we could say that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF because it's a right angle triangle with the hypotenuse and one side equal. 
So that is going to be our first rule, and that applies to right angle triangles. If the hypotenuse and the other side, any of these two sides, are equal in our triangles, they are congruent. Our second rule is going to apply to any type of triangle, not just right angle triangles. And that rule is that if we have two triangles, like the ones I'm about to draw, if we have two triangles that have all three of their corresponding sides that are equal in length, the triangles are congruent. So again, we can see that as it is, this triangle might not look exactly like this one because it has been rotated a little bit, but if we were to rotate this triangle this way, we're going to see that it's going to look exactly like this one. And the most important thing that we need to check is whether corresponding side lengths are equal. So we can see that our corresponding sides, this side is going to be equal to this side, this side is equal to this side, and this side side is equal to this side, our corresponding sides are equal in length. And if we have all three of our corresponding sides equal in length in two triangles, we can say that those triangles are congruent. So in this case, we are going to say that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF because all three side lengths are equal to the corresponding side lengths of the other triangle. For our next rule, if we have two triangles that have two side lengths that are equal and the angle that is created by those two sides is also equal, then we can say that the triangles are congruent. So this is known as the side angle side rule. And what's very important is that the angle has to be the angle that is created by those two sides that are equal between the two triangles. So we can see that in these two triangles, this side and this side are equal between these two triangles. BC is equal to EF and AC is equal to DF. And this angle C is equal to angle F. And those are the angles that are created by those two sides that are also equal. So here we would say that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF because two sides and the included angle are equal. So our last rule is known as the angle-angle side rule. And that rule says that if we have two angles and one side that are equal to the two corresponding angles and the one corresponding side of the other triangle, the triangles are congruent. So if we have two angles and one side and they are equal in our two triangles, we can say that they are congruent. And again, if we just rotated one of these triangles slightly, we can see that they have their corresponding angles equal. Angle B is equal to angle E, angle C is equal to angle F, and side AC is equal to side DF. So we can say that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF because two angles and one side of the triangle are equal to the corresponding two angles and one side of the other triangle. So that is our angle-angle side rule. So those are four different rules that we have just gone over that will allow you to determine whether two triangles are congruent just based on the lengths of some of their sides and knowing a few pieces of information, but not all of the information about those angles. So you don't need to necessarily calculate every single angle and the length of every single side in, the, in two triangles to tell whether they're congruent or not because we have these four rules that are going to help us determine whether triangles are congruent when you only have some information about those triangles and not all of the information.